In the world of smartphones, one battle has silently defined the future of global technology. On one side, Qualcomm, the American chip giant, powering Android phones for over a decade. On the other, Huawei, the Chinese tech powerhouse that defied US sanctions and built a chip no one thought was possible. Today, we dive deep into the real-world face-off between Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Kirin 9000S, two chips that represent not just technological innovation, but a global race for dominance in the semiconductor world. Qualcomm has been at the heart of the mobile revolution since the early days of 3G. With every new generation, Snapdragon chips have pushed the limits of speed, efficiency, and AI. But when the US government banned Huawei from accessing advanced chip manufacturing tools and American technology, the world assumed China's smartphone empire would collapse. Instead, Huawei shocked everyone. In 2023, it unveiled the Kirin 9000S, a chip developed under sanctions. Built by China's own semiconductor company SMIC, using a 7 nanometer process that shouldn't have been possible under export restrictions. This was more than a product launch. It was a statement of independence. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, designed by Qualcomm and manufactured by TSMC using a 4 nanometer process, is a beast of modern engineering. It features one prime Cortex X4 core clocked at 3.3 GHz, five performance cores, and two efficiency cores. With an Adreno 750 GPU, it's optimized for AI, gaming, and energy-efficient multitasking. Meanwhile, Huawei's Kirin 9000S runs on a custom architecture called Taishan, developed in-house with help from High Silicon. Its 12-core CPU configuration and Mali-based GPU aren't as powerful on paper but Huawei's optimization within Harmony OS gives it an edge in stability and real-time performance. The key difference? Qualcomm uses cutting-edge 4 nanometer fabrication from TSMC, while Huawei relies on China's domestic 7 nanometer node from SMIC, making every transistor a symbol of technological resistance. In real-world testing, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 leads in raw benchmark scores. On Geekbench 6, it scores around 2,200 in single-core and 7,100 in multi-core tests. Huawei's Kirin 9000S, on the other hand, averages 1,400 single-core and 4,800 multi-core. But numbers don't tell the full story. Huawei's chip built under intense technological restrictions, shows incredible efficiency under sustained loads. In long gaming sessions, its thermal management system often outperforms Snapdragon devices, which tend to throttle under heat. It's not just about power, it's about endurance. Here's where things get interesting. Qualcomm's Hexagon NPU brings advanced AI capabilities, from real-time image enhancement to predictive multitasking. But Huawei's DaVinci NPU architecture has a secret weapon. Integration with its own AI ecosystem, Pangu AI. When processing images on Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, the Kirin chip uses AI to rebuild color and texture details at lightning speed. In low-light photography, Huawei's algorithmic magic sometimes beats Snapdragon-powered flagships like the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Both chips are powerful, but Huawei's in-house synergy between hardware and software gives it a uniquely optimized experience. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 comes equipped with the X75 5G modem, offering up to 10 gigabits per second download speeds and global millimeter wave support. Huawei's Kirin 9000S uses a 5G-like solution integrated into its SoC, though Huawei officially avoids calling it 5G due to sanctions. Still, speed tests show Huawei's foams reaching 1.5 gigabits per second, rivaling many mid-range 5G devices. 
This shows how Huawei cleverly bypassed restrictions using domestically built modem solutions. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, while powerful, often draws more power under load. For years, the world has been watching China's rise. But what we're seeing now, with American tech giants being quietly shown the door, isn't a sudden burst of tension. It's the result of a plan decades in the making. And that plan has just reached its tipping point. Think of it like this. China has spent years in the gym, building its tech muscles. It has poured trillions into its own companies, trained a generation of engineers, and learned how to build everything it once used to buy from the West. Today, it looks in the mirror and sees a powerhouse. China no longer just assembles your iPhone, it designs its own chips, builds its own operating systems, and runs vast cloud empires. The student hasn't just graduated, it's opening a competing school across the street. This transformation didn't happen in isolation. It comes at a moment when global trust is at an all-time low. And that combination, strength at home and chaos abroad, created the perfect moment for China to flip the switch and prioritize its own tech future over foreign partnerships. And when they flipped that switch, the first company to feel the power go out was an American memory chip giant called Micron. What happened to Micron wasn't just a business decision, it was a statement. Chinese regulators accused Micron's chips of posing a serious network security risk. And with that ruling, Micron was banned from China's critical infrastructure. Government servers, state-run banks, the very backbone of the internet. Billions in revenue vanished overnight, but the message was louder than the numbers. China now holds the keys to its digital kingdom, and it's not afraid to change the locks. Micron became the warning shot that told every U.S. tech firm, the rules of the game have changed forever. Then came IBM. For over three decades, IBM was the face of American technology in China. But its exit wasn't loud or dramatic. It was quiet, almost ceremonial. After 32 years, IBM shut down its research labs and dissolved its investment arm in the country. It wasn't just about losing market share. It was about ending the mission of inventing the future there. For decades, IBM had been a teacher, helping China build its tech foundation. But now the student no longer needed the teacher. China had its own blueprints, its own talent, its own direction. IBM's departure marked the end of an era, the moment the collaboration chapter officially closed. Contrast that with Microsoft, which chose to leave not in panic, but in precision. Microsoft saw the shift coming. Instead of waiting for pressure, it began moving its hardware production from Surface laptops to Xbox consoles out of China. This strategy, known as de-risking, is like quietly building a new house before your old neighborhood becomes unsafe. By shifting its supply chain to countries like Vietnam and India, Microsoft isn't surrendering, it's protecting its global reach. It's making sure that no matter how rough U.S.-China relations get, the flow of products never stops. A calm, calculated retreat, not a collapse. But to understand all these moves, you need to see the bigger picture. China's master plan for tech self-reliance. For years, Beijing has been executing a long-term strategy to create domestic champions in every critical tech sector. From semiconductors and software to cloud and AI. The goal is simple. Never depend on foreign technology again. And they're not just talking about big state-owned enterprises. Thousands of little giant startups have been funded to replace Western suppliers from the ground up. Piece by piece, China is building a parallel digital universe, one where everything, 